local history, local culture, local events, your community. This is the Joe Kelly Show. And welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute and all the stuff that's going on down there for the Christmas holiday. They got a jam packed schedule. We'll tell you all about it. Our guest is Anna D'Ambrosio. She is the president and chief executive officer down at Munson Williams. Always good to see you. Nice to see you too, Joe. Glad Thank to you. be here. Um, big, uh, big uh, holiday uh, doings down at uh, Munson Williams. Uh, but before we get to that, sure. um, I enjoyed Im tremendously going down to uh, Munson Williams um, this summer, I guess it was when I was down there for the Norman Rockwell mm -hmm. exhibit. We, in fact, we did a special show down there. It seemed to be very successful. How successful was it? It was. It was our most successful um, summer exhibition running from June to September that we have had in, gosh, probably three decades. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why, why do you think? Well, I think Norman Rockwell um, is a familiar name to many people. Mm -hmm. And what well, one of the great successes of the exhibition was that people came in thinking they knew Norman Rockwell, you know, familiar with the Saturday Evening Post covers yeah. and many of those classic images that we still see often today. And then they learned more about Norman Rockwell. They learned about Norman Rockwell really as an agent of um, social change and um, his change in um, some of the imagery he depicted in uh, the 1960s. So I think it was both sentimental, they learned something, they saw something familiar. Yeah. And you know what always, Joe, it is? It's great art, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things, no matter what the subject of an exhibition we do, we want to make sure that it is of the highest caliber as far as, far as the art works. Yeah, I'm glad it was such a big success for you. I knew it would be. Uh, coming up, you know, talking about the uh, success, um, up in Constableville, um, forget hundred, I forget how many years ago it was, but uh, Clement Moore wrote a poem. And uh, there's some question if, uh, that historians have about, well, was it at the Constable Hall that he wrote the poem, or was it somewhere else, or was it somebody? But or a sleigh ride, I've yeah, also yeah, heard, yeah, right, yeah. right. But I think most people give Clement Moore uh, the um, authorship of that famous poem, and that he was at uh, Constable Hall, which still stands and open for tours, as the venue for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got something to do with uh, that upcoming at Munson Williams. Well, so we're celebrating it for sure. So Clement Moore wrote, Twas the Night Before Christmas, or Visit from St. Nicholas, original title, in 1822. And, you know, there's another regional connection. It was first published in the Troy, New York papers in 1823. Right. And the story is that he wrote it wherever, on a sleigh ride, yeah. or, um, but composed it um, because he had six children. Mm -hmm. And so he composed it one day and started by reading it to his six children, and then it evolved and eventually was published. So for, gosh, probably 40 years, I'm not really sure. We have been celebrating the holidays at Munson Williams at the museum at Fountain Elms through Victorian Yuletide. Mm -hmm. And every year we pick a theme and um, hard to imagine for the decades that we've been doing it, we mix it up year after year. But today and so, or this year in celebration of Clement Moore's uh, story, poem, uh, we are interpreting the night before Christmas in the four period room settings in Fountain Elms. And Fountain Elms, of course, for people who aren't aware, is the, um, is that a, the architecture of that, that's an Italian It's an Italian eight, right. Yeah. So it was built in 1850. It was the family home for James and Helen Munson Williams. And they raised their two daughters there, Rachel and Mariah Williams. And Rachel and Mariah married um, half-brothers Rachel married Fred Proctor, and Mariah married Tom Proctor. So there you get the evolution of Munson yeah. Williams Proctor Arts Institute right. in three generations of one family. And the um, house remained in the family. Mariah lived there until her death um, in uh, 1936. And that's when the institute opened to the public a few months later. Yeah, Who, what, the house next door that was Mariah and Tom's. I'm that, sorry, you're right. That yeah. was Mariah and Tom's. Okay. And Rachel and Fred lived in Fountain Elms. Yeah. But Mariah kept um, Fountain Elms as the family home. And um, Fred actually had remarried. And his second wife was um, continued to live in Fountain Elms until 
the institute opened to the public and mm -hmm. she moved up um, to another home in New Hartford. Yeah, and the uh, uh, Fountain Elms uh, building is really, the inside of that building, the outside of that building is really like it was, yes? The outside for certain. It's the original paint colors. We did a lot of research on um, the outside. The family always added on to the house a couple times. Uh, but the inside does not represent how the family lived. And when the Institute opened its doors in 1936, Fountain Elms was the Museum of Art. It wasn't called that then. It was a gallery building. But that was a building where the museum first had its collections and did exhibitions. But when we got a large gift from Edward Wales Root, um, a promised gift in the 1950s, given to us in 58 when he passed away, we had far outgrown using both Fountain Elms and Mariah and Tom's house next door. And so 1960s, when the Philip Johnson designed Museum of Art building opened. And there's still, uh, uh, so there, so uh, Mariah and uh, Tom's house came down. That one came down, to right. To make room for the uh, Museum of Art. But there's other buildings on your campus that are that date back to those days, yes? Oh, certainly. So the buildings behind um, the museum, when I say the museum, I mean the Johnson Building, the Education Wing, that connects yeah. it to Fountain Elms. So there's carriage um, sheds and stable buildings that are behind that. And today, that is the ceramics and sculpture studios for our School of Art. Yeah. I, I kind of got you off the track here, but... Well, I probably did that yeah. easily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, poem will be celebrated through the house. Yeah, so th let's go back to Victorian Yule Tide. Yeah. So on view um, through December 31st, and Victorian Yule Tide is our annual exhibition that celebrates the holidays. Mm -hmm. So in those four period room settings on the first four Fountain Elms are decorated to interpret that Clement Moore poem, including, you know, Not a Creature Was Stirring, so kids can go in and find that little hidden mouse. Mm -hmm. But different phrases of the poem, those classic scenes that you can imagine from Twas the Night Before Christmas. And one of the things that's really great about um, Victorian Yuletide at Fountain Elms, uh, you know, we take out the best silver and, and china and decorate those rooms, but we also truly represent what it could have looked like in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. So you won't see, you know, electric lights or glitzy um, contemporary decorations, but you will see what a traditional 19th century American Christmas looked like. And you can learn a lot about the history of Christmas and how it is celebrated in the United States and all of the origins from England and other European countries. Is there a charge? No, the Museum of Art is free. The only tar time we charge an admission is for summer exhibitions, special exhibitions, to help defray the cost. Okay. So always free. All right. Anna D'Ambrosio is our guest. We're talking Munson Williams. Lots of stuff coming up there for Christmas. We'll talk a little bit more about the uh, uh, Fountain Elms when we come back, and then there's a concert coming up, a Christmas concert. We'll talk about that as well. Short break, right back. Anna D'Ambrosio is the chief executive and president of Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute, and she's talking about some of the things that are going on down there from now up until Christmas, a little past Christmas, including the, um, how do we say, including the depiction of Clement Moore's famous poem uh, throughout the house. In addition to uh, seeing the depiction of the poem, Kids, I think, are going to be interested in this, really, don't oh, you think? Yeah, um, really, families love Victorian Yuletide. It's a yeah. great time to come and celebrate the holidays at the museum. The cafe is opened, okay. and then upstairs on the second floor of Fountain Elms, we have the dollhouse that was a Christmas gift in 1856 to Rachel and Mariah Williams. And we always decorate that, too, because those two women did it and decorated that dollhouse 
to adulthood. Yeah, I know you know your history well, um, and really the the money um, of all this, the benefits that we continue to enjoy today, uh, I'll go back to Alfred Munson, does it not? I mean, that's where it started. Yeah, Alfred Munson came to Utica in the 1820s, and he was quite an entrepreneur. Um, his estate passed to Helen Munson Williams, who was an excellent businesswoman and uh, invested well, and then the money passed to her two daughters. One of the things I think of, Anna, is, uh, and I've thought of this more than once, they had none of the, uh, Fred Proctor and his wife and Thomas Proctor and his wife, they had no surviving children. Correct. And right. I've often thought, what would have happened had they had a whole brood of kids? Um, you know, our whole history really in uh, the greater Utica area could have changed. Well, it's true because this family was so um, generous to this community from Grace Church, the hospital, the library, Munson Williams, I mean, just so many charities, mm -hmm. the park system, of course, uh, yeah. you know, so many things um, in this community benefited from the benevolence of that family. The um, uh, tours through Fountain Elms, there's, if you come at particular times, you can take a guided tour, yes? Yes, absolutely. I always say go to the website, mwpai.org, and um, you can click on the current exhibitions, learn more about guided tours and times to come for that. Um, there's also a concert, December 10th. Uh, what's that concert all about? So that's take three, um, classical musicians, but put a classical spin on fun contemporary um, Christmas music. That's part of our concert in the court series. So that's the 10th at 7.30. Tickets are available online or at the museum. And um, you know, the concerts in the court are just a special um, location because we transform the root court in the center of the museum into a fabulous concert venue. So we have a bar, um, you're up close with the musicians and you're surrounded by uh, galleries. And so during intermission, we offer a short gallery talk uh, mm. as well. So you get a great experience. You know, it's so much more than just a concert. You get fabulous musicians and music and art. Yeah, the uh, uh, court is really a, a special place. I mean, we were there on another occasion, I was with you and uh, it is a, a very special place when you look around yeah. while you're standing there. Yeah, it's a, it's, you know, Philip Johnson, that's just a beautiful, beautiful architecturally, and it just shows off the collection so wonderfully. Yeah, the um, uh, concert uh, in the court is a, a kind of a continuing it's thing. It's a series we've been doing for many, many years. And we always try to present um, a variety of music and something that you won't see anywhere else in the region. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, Munson Williams Proctor is uh, a name that is very familiar to, uh, well, you would think just about everybody around here, but not everybody understands how it's broken up. I mean, you've got- Oh, the organization, yeah, right, yeah. right. And you've got Pratt down there now too. We do. So, three main program divisions, the Museum of Art, the School of Art, and Performing Arts. And then the School of Art has our community arts education classes. So right now we have registration, for example, open for the winter spring uh, classes. And there we offer everything from ceramics and painting, drawing, silver jewelry, and uh, great classes taught by working artists, really special and taught in the same studios where we also run our Pratt MWP program. Mm -hmm. So that's our affiliation, uh, t over 20 year affiliation with Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, College of Art and Design, one of the best college of art and design really in the world. Mm. And we have about 230 students living at Munson Williams. We have three dorms right on our Munson Williams campus and uh, they are freshmen, sophomores, and they spend their junior, senior years down in Brooklyn Mm -hmm. at Pratt Institute. I guess, uh, and I don't know how you do it, but uh, the, how big Munson Williams is. I mean, it oh, is right. big. Uh, how <laughs> we do have you? 25 buildings yeah. on about 10 acres. And, but people really see the Genesee Street facade right. of the museum buildings, and that's what they associate. But there's so much more going on behind. Yeah. You were telling me before the show that uh, 
and Munson Williams got some state money and you're going to be doing some landscape work? We are. Um, we were really fortunate to receive some of the downtown revitalization initiative money from the state. Mm -hmm. That was about $10 million that went to the city of Utica and then you applied your individual projects. So we're going to be re-landscaping and making that a much more inviting space, a little bit more how it was intended in 1960 under the auspices of Philip Johnson's uh, design and the landscape architect that he worked with. So I think it'll be more visitor friendly, a little bit more engaging with the neighborhood. We hope to really activate that space and be able to invite other community organizations to hold outdoor events there. Oh, how exciting is that? Now, yeah. uh, is, is this on just on the Genesee Street side? Yes, it only, the grant only covers the Genesee Street. And side. so it's going to be expanded. Can you kind of describe? Not expanded. Um, we, we just had our first two meetings. So we're do, still doing a lot of brainstorm working with a landscape architecture firm out of uh, Rochester who's done similar projects. Mm -hmm. And um, re-landscaping it, uh, we'd like to have changing sculpture on view. We will always want to be able to use it for our summer arts festival, you know, one of our most yeah. popular events. But really, the original landscape plan also softened that entrance. You know, um, the Philip Johnson building is a f nationally and state registered um, historic structure. Mm -hmm. But we did surveys. We talked to lots of people in the neighborhood. We did focus groups. And a lot of people feel it's a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a big granite right. building, large staircase with a small door. So we want to soften that. We want everyone to know that they are welcome. We want everyone to come in that door. Okay. Anna D'Ambrosio is our guest. We're talking Munson Williams Proctor because that's where she is the CEO and president. Short break, right back. Anna D'Ambrosio is our guest. She is the uh, CEO and president down at Munson Williams Proctor Institute. We're talking about all the kind of stuff that's happening down there from now until Christmas time, including uh, you've got a, um, an exhibit by a, a lady that I haven't heard of before. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. So Leslie Dale Wilderness, Light Sizzles Around Me, is an exhibition um, of artwork by Leslie Dale, who's a contemporary New York-based artist. And... Um, it is a stunning, ethereal experience. I can't say and encourage you enough to go down and walk through that gallery. So Leslie Dill has created sculptures and she uses sculptures and words and banners to represent authors um, and historical figures um, throughout history. And um, these are larger than life uh, sculptures that are very figurative that hang from uh, the ceiling. And so when you walk into the gallery, you're really surrounded by these wonderful contemporary sculptures. And they are, uh, represent historical figures such as um, Emily Dickinson or Nathaniel Hawthorne or Hester Prynne from um, Nathaniel Hawthorne's writings, um, Black Hawk, a Native American, um, Sojourner Truth, uh, Mother Ann Lee, founder of the Shakers. Um, Horace Pippin, just a variety of uh, historical figures, artists, authors, and it, she really explores the meaning of their work, what shaped them as people, and how they have shaped history, and how history, art, and contemporary society is all linked. And it just, it is um, stunning, visually stunning. Uh, I think there's something for everyone to connect with in that exhibition. Mm. The, um, that's on to when? That is on through January 29th. Okay. The, uh, how far ahead are you doing these, uh, th the planning on these things? For exhibitions? Be, yeah. 
Right, so we um, have recently appointed Stephen Harrison as Mu Museum of Art Director. And that was the gentleman I had on for Norman Rockwell, yes, was it not? Yes, he's yeah. been with Munster Women's for two years as Deputy Director and Chief Curator, and a couple weeks ago, um, he moved up to the position of Museum of Art Director and Chief mm -hmm. Curator. Okay. And we are planning that schedule, gosh, uh, probably three to four years out. Mm. I mean, the further out you get, it gets a little bit looser, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Um, but exhibitions take two to three years often to develop. Um, sometimes for some exhibitions, we uh, have a touring exhibition that we are part of, and so those are planned several years out. Mm. Well, I, and I think back, and you came out, you were sitting right there, uh, about that wedding dress uh, right. exhibition. And I thought to myself when you were talking about it, and you were very excited about it, <laughs> I thought, I don't nah, know. No, nah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But boy, that was <laughs> that, a popular yeah, exhibit. Yeah, they hit it out of the ballpark. It yeah. was, it was. That, um, gosh, Joe, was that 2010? I'm oh, going to say. Could I'm, it be yeah, that so it, long ago? Yes, okay. yes. We haven't changed, I suppose. <laughs> we haven't changed at all. Um, I think it could have even been um, soon um, older than that. But that is um, really what launched the summer exhibition program. Mm -hmm. I mean, that exhibition was so popular. I mean, I, I, it was often men who said wedding dresses yeah. and then came and said, oh, it's so much more yeah. than wedding dresses. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there was great stories, great artwork. I mean, yeah. what makes a great exhibition is right, what engages with you. Right. Telling a great story, seeing something visual that you wouldn't see otherwise, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Uh, and it was very successful and we've been doing a whole series of those summer exhibitions since. How uh, successful are your, is it Wednesday and Fridays for your movies? Yes, yeah. oh yeah, the Wednesday and Friday film series. Um, we both do a matinee and an evening show and they are very successful. We have a loyal audience and always new people coming to join us because they're great films that you might not see elsewhere. Well, they're not all, some of the films that you see down there and I'm fortunate enough to be able to get down there now and then to see one of those movies, but you don't, they're not offered anywhere else. Exactly, right. And they're right. just kind of, a, I don't know how to describe it, a, kind of an offbeat movie. Yep, sometimes, yeah. and sometimes foreign films, yeah. sometimes films that just don't make it into the j big theaters. Sometimes they're um, Academy Award nominees, so you might have missed it in the big theater and you get to see it again on the big screen. Yeah. It's such a great auditorium, you know, small enough, seats 270, but has great sound, great visuals, yeah. so it's a perfect place for a film. People, uh, I think, you, and you can confirm or deny this, but I think sometimes the public thinks that Munson Williams is a closed kind of a organization. Really, it's open to everybody. Right, so you know, we said the museum is free. We've been doing a lot of things since um, launching our strategic plan in um, the fall of 2019 to be much more actively um, community engaged. Uh, we've tried to do things, we have been successful in doing things and breaking down barriers where there might be tuition, for example, to summer art classes for kids. We have a great summer arts program in that community arts program for, for kids. Mm. And um, this year, because of a state grant, we were able to make it free for everyone. And we have funding to do that again next mm. year. And so just to take away some of those barriers, um, we do a wonderful series called um, Art Alive. We have one coming up on December 29th. So when families are looking for a place to bring their kids when that um, holiday break is like, okay, we have to get yeah. out of the house. Yeah. A whole day um, of free activities at Munson Williams. And again, we've been able to take away the um, charge for the performance in the auditorium. Then there's kids crafts upstairs. Cafe does a special um, kids menu, but for those events in the auditorium and uh, the crafts, totally free of charge. Mm. The, um, uh, do a recap now of what we got coming up. We've got the, um, uh, it was We've the got night before Christmas. We've got Victorian Yeah. So Victorian Yuletide, was the night before Christmas. Leslie Dill on view through the 29th. Take Three concert in the court on um, December 10th at 7.30. Community Arts Education, Winter mm. Spring Class registration, uh, going on and Art Alive on the 29th from 10 till 2. And uh, all this is on a website. 
All of this is at mwpai.org. Okay. Come back sooner rather than later because you got a lot of stuff. I, know, got, I got some secrets up my sleeve for right. the spring, Joe. <laughs> well, come back then. Okay. Looking forward to it. Always good to see you, and you a too. continued success. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back next week. We'll do it all again. Don't forget, uh, speaking of websites, so cnyhomepage.com. There's a lot of good stuff there, including an archive of this show. Until next time, take care of yourself, everybody.